poem about October is really about I see my journey uh, because it's the uh, starting out at the beginning using the day, waking up the day, and you're journeying to life. Into the, and there are the images, the birds, the water, the sky, uh, the, the, the whole, the mist, and he was able to uh, evoke, evoke in this wonderful imagery the, the actual sensation which I as an artist find so inspiring. And, and so, um, and I compare my, my own images of my work with nature, the, the lark singing, the joy of, 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 of ascending to the heights of the spirit and using the lark as a metaphor of, of our spirit to transcend from the ordinary mundane to the extraordinary. And that's what art is about. True art is about to transcend from the ordinary to, to the extraordinary. So the, the painter, the artist, the creator, whether it's a painter, a poet, a composer, a author, his, his, your nature is our, our actual wonderful source of inspiration. It's what we say from the inspiration which makes that work a universal to other human heart to respond to. And so with this poem, it's got this wonderful journey, the child, the mother, the, the child of innocence, and discovering and, and having this anticipation, but always things change. The change, change the metaphors of life all the time. So the weather turns around is a metaphor that we, work, we are walking along and then something happens and, we, and this new, new uh, awareness comes, this new birth, it's a new birth, always new birth, whether uh, we are prepared or not. And this great experience that makes us then puts our, our senses in high tune to creation. Welcome to Spirit of Renewal, the Manly Art Gallery and Museum Poetry Live Reading for 2021. This event, a synergy of poetry and art, is now in its seventh year, although this is the first time, thanks to COVID, it has been presented virtually. Each year, 20 poets respond to an exhibition staged by Manly Art Gallery, reading their poems live, surrounded by the very artwork that inspired them. This year, the poets were inspired by the stunning artwork of Northern Beaches-based artist Salvatore Zofrea, whose drawing exhibition was to have appeared at Manly Art Gallery as part of a 75th celebration, a birthday celebration of his work and career. Sadly, we cannot gather together today in the gallery as planned, but we can offer you a recording of an incredible array of poets reading their original works poems that will lift your spirits, evoke themes of reinvention, resilience and renewal, and resonate with the stunning artwork of Zofrea. Plus, for the first time as part of Poetry Alive, we will be treated to a guest appearance and talk by the artist himself. So let's begin. First, an acknowledgement of country by Indigenous curator and poet, John Mundine, OAM. Uh, my name is John Mundine, and uh, I'm a Bundjalung man from the northern rivers of New South Wales on the coast. But really, I'm coming to you from the, the Gunungungara land, uh, and I will speak from there. I'd like to acknowledge the owners of all of the lands of Australia. I'd like to acknowledge all the clans of Australia and wish them well in their uh, aspirations, their attempts at achievements and uh, the solving of their problems. Their problems are my problems and uh, they are the problems of all my family. We are linked to them. We share those problems. We certainly see that and they are the problems and aspirations of all Australians. They should be seen that way. 
Thank you. Rosanna Lilly is an author and academic. Her essays and poems have been widely published. Her hybrid prose poetry memoir, Do Oysters Get Bored? A Curious Life, was shortlisted for the National Biography Award in 2019. A chapbook, The Lady in the Bottle, is forthcoming from Eyewear Press, London in 2022. Today, Rosanna will be reading her poem, River Running. In the 1960s, my family had a holiday house in a beautiful place called Yundra, south of Perth. And I still often dream about it. River running. In the river of my childhood, I swim, breath ballooning, each easeful stroke cutting clouded water, scattered with she-oak. Black winged stilts wading belly deep, barking to their wayward cheeks. Ruckled fishermen sail home on the westerlies, hauling herring heavy nets. Treading water, my webbed feet stretch to solid ground, a giantess. Stride quickening as I splinter snags, stepping over the limestone walls of Cooper's Mill, shingle tiles cascading, the trace of my quickening step weaving each abandoned bend. At Delta's entrance, I pause, recalling the venomous spines of cobblers searching the muddy bottom. I am the river and I am still running. Miriam Hetchman is a Sydney-based Australian writer, creative producer and poet. She is the founder and creative director of Poetica, a live poetry and music initiative and co-presenter and producer of Wordsmith, a poetry podcast. She's also editor of the poetry anthology, The Alphabet of Women. Today, Miriam will be reading her poem, Beginnings. Beginnings. When we arrived, we didn't recognize the heat the way the wet air rose from the ground skyward, its scent wafting above the praying grass blades, a soft pink halo to signal the morning had broken. And as the day unfolded, petals uncurled, unfurled, we took off our heavy tailored coats, shook them out brusquely with haste, memories of the old country flying. You rolled up your sleeves, unbuttoned your collar. I unpinned my mother's silver citrine brooch, letting the folds of my blouse loosen. And we looked to the sun, the way the flowers did, rising, stretching, turning out, our breathing slowing to the beat of the swirling hibiscus, alongside the robust red flowering gum a fine romance poised against a cornflower blue sky, a hue so familiar I had to close my eyes. And I remembered my days in Holland, looking out from the tiny convent windows, my only view the sky, its benevolent blue, my one promise of hope, as I hid as a child, earthed in the walls of saviors. Now we were standing, our bodies unwrapping, rays of golden light pounding, droplets trickling down our sunken cheeks, a mingling of tears and sweat, the marks of our renewal. Like seeds, we had pushed our way through the darkness and now we were here. Paul Hetherington and Cassandra Atherton are award-winning poets, co-authors of Prose Poetry, an introduction published by Princeton University Press, and co-editors of the Anthology of Australian Prose Poetry. Today, they will read their co-authored poem, Wild Hibiscus. 
I tore up my journals when I got sick, destroyed two decades of thought in one afternoon. Cursive writing in thick fountain penned loops filled the kitchen bin until all that was left were book covers with no pages. In a hospital bed, I fixated on the blank walls. I sent you a photo of nothing and you sent me photos of boats and colored lights on water. They kept me company at midnight and 4 a.m. when the nurse came to start the drip. Your travels lit up my collagenous space, reminding me of something always out of my reach. When my mother brought calla lilies during visiting hour, I didn't tell her they were funeral flowers. Instead, I remembered long tropical afternoons with you, pollen from the bright stamen of a wild hibiscus staining my cheek with yellow iridescence. Recollections, red, yellow and blue. It's a blur of colour and flurry of synapses. You were intimate, though never in my bed. I could always imagine turning to speak to you. Now, thousands of kilometres stretch like an inland sea. You bloom persistently in thought, but our utterance is straightened in this breathless virtual air. I'd taste the bitterness of the hibiscus cafe's cinnamon sprinkled cappuccino and hear you speak for hours. Such insistent imperfections that I crave like an improbable form of manner. Let it rise, however stunted. Let the disagreements we've harboured chasten and connect us. Let blossoms colour with sudden adverbial vigour. Let language become the wild hibiscus flower. John Mundine OEM is a proud Bundjalung man from the northern rivers of New South Wales. Mundine is a curator, writer, artist and activist and is celebrated as a foundational figure in the criticism and exhibition of contemporary Aboriginal art. Mundine won the Australia Council's 2020 Red Ochre Award for Lifetime Achievement and is currently an independent curator of contemporary Indigenous art and a cultural mentor. Today, he'll be performing his piece, Who's Trying to Kill Blinky Bill? Uh, my name's uh, John Mundine and I'm a Bunjung man from uh, the Northern Rivers of New South Wales. And one of my major totems is the koala, the koala bear. The koala uh, bear is um, very important. There are a number, there's a number of stories about the koala bear, but the koala bear, uh, there's a story about one stage at the beginning of time, um, Aboriginal people and all the birds and animals, etc., got together and they wanted, uh, they wanted some wise creature who would be able to lead them and uh, give them wisdom and lead them to live in peace and harmony and social happiness. And so they uh, thought about it and eventually they picked on the kangaroo. And the kangaroo is a tall, majestic animal, but uh, he wanted to uh, deliver his talk to the people uh, from a high place so he could see down over them. He went up onto a mountain to talk down to people but they couldn't really hear him and they didn't like it. And so they, uh, that was a complete failure. They were all in, in disarray, the people. So eventually they came back uh, and that, the next day and uh, came to meet. And then somebody said, well, what about this person? And so they chose the koala, the koala who sits up in a tree quietly. And that koala was the person the being that gave them the wisdom to live together in peace and harmony. Uh, this poem I'm going to read is something I've <laughs> created very quickly. Um, I did a performance piece about the killing of the marsupials with the last fires, and of course about the, the extermination of marsupials uh, due to the cutting down of trees and the destruction of the environment. It's called, Who Killed, um, Who's Trying to Kill Blinky Bill? And it goes uh, something like this. 
who's trying to kill Blinky Bill? Well, I'm Blinky Bill, and they never will. Who are these idiots uh, pointing a gun at me? Those uh, idiots who can only just dig a hole or cut down the trees. They killed a million of my forebears at Federation. We're hardly wild or a threat to the nation. How do you kill a cuddly creature who cries like a baby child? You call that wild? They talk of a bear trapped in the fork of a tree. A decision moment, a decision time for you and me. Who's trying to kill Blinky Bill? Well, me and you are Blinky Bill. We've got to make sure they never will. Jen Chen is a second generation Australian Chinese poet and lawyer. Through her work in international aid, domestic violence policy and mental health law, she has heard stories of marginalization, trauma and resilience. She tries to explore the universality of these themes in her poems. Today she will read Postcards from Tomorrow. My name is Jen Chen and this is Postcards from Tomorrow. My future self sent me postcards each week amidst a bleak season of brittle entreaty, lukewarm tea and a doorbell that never rang. Her postcards sang of spring, red, gold, violet wildflowers swinging in tempests that threw petals and tussled overgrown grass like lover's hair. In ecstasy or despair, evening prayers sent on bended knees on the banks of a river that wound, blurred and bound for a horizon I could not see. I longed for a reassuring word, however slurred, promised that my days of hostage were numbered. Instead, she sent me lush pastures, unencumbered still waters, banksias, honeycombs, hymnal of a pilgrimage home. Robbie Coburn is the author of poetry collections Rain Season and The Other Flesh. His work has been published in places such as Poetry, Mianjin, Ireland and Westerly. He is currently working on a new book of poems entitled Rodeo. He lives and works in Victoria and today he will be reading his poem Rebirth. Rebirth. I prepared my flesh for its new life yesterday steadied the crudely fashioned handles and pulled quickly. The rip left sheets of scar tissue were emptying onto the carpet, a stain forming a puddle beneath my naked white toes. The torn opening widened into a hole where my mouth had been, sprawled still across the floor. The scarred surface shed its habit and abandoned its blemishes easily, falling through the circled and frayed furrows. After the burning of dawn tanned the leathery skin, the old body collapsed in a heap of bone and sinew. Each stage of decomposition, breathing through my sewn throat where breath bled from my bare lungs. In the building light, I watched drawn wires tangled across the line of pegs as I secured the other flesh to dry out. It fit better and wore itself in around my glad eyes and abraded insides. This was the beginning. The new became normal before darkness could be heightened, loosened into the clear shot of morning. Jenny Pollack has been a visual artist for most of her life, focusing her arts practice in photography, sculpture and video installation. For several years, she has also performed as a flautist and percussionist with various Latin American bands around Sydney and New South Wales, and briefly in South America. In 2012, she began a dedicated poetry practice and has since been published in various literary journals. She is currently working on her first two collections of poetry. Today, she will be reading Turning by Degrees. Turning by Degrees. 
even without seeing the dark chambers oozing their sweets. You have the idea, watching the bees thrusting their heads into the specific rows. They serve a master greater than you can ever believe. To keep on moving. This is what matter wants most of all. And what the obedient plants keep saying, all their cellulose lifted up in one alphabet of lust. The various bees and all the winged and willing servants complicit in this. Matter doesn't rest. Excessive pollen spills from its cups more than enough for such a manifesto of love. What kind of light is it falls from this distance, precise as a blade and illuminates a single white flower in a field of dull hills? What kind of music as you traipse through clods of the earth, the ground shifting and your feet stumbling in the raised dirt, the dust on your cheeks? The diminished hills are ringing color from the clouds which are drawn back like curtains, playing their bit part as they bow and scrape the edge of the dumb stage here in the plain field, among the pink eyes and Pontiacs, King Edwards and Dutch creams, which rest in their hillocks. A single flower in the light, as if someone had reached down a hand and commanded this exact Scene. This is what I come down for, dragging the skin of my sleep, communing with the slick wings and the candelabra plants, all of us dipping our wicks in the new light, bees poking their sticky heads into the glorious mauve. It's enough the sun has risen and clouds have parted, that one bird in particular sounds ecstatic and the shower in the night still glistens on the leaves. A thousand delicate sips a bird might have, but insects everywhere are beginning to rise. We could do worse than follow the curve of a rib, knowing how close to the heart it always was, night after night spinning our webs between the stuck stars, every one of us turning by degrees until all that's visible are the bones of our lives shining under the repetitive moon. Tina McCarthy is an Italian Barkindji poet and visual artist. She is a descendant of the Stolen Generations and her work documents her family's displacement and Aboriginal Australians' loss of culture and their hidden history. Tina's poems have been published in Cordite and Verity La and she has recently published her first poetry collection, Bush Mary, from Cordite Press. Today, Tina will read her new poem, Dear Alibi. I'd like to acknowledge the Aboriginal people as the traditional owners and custodians of this nation, of which now we live and work. We acknowledge the ancestors and elders who were and continue to be the storytellers. They help us to know, they help us to know our country and the people of the past and present more clearly. Finally, we're reminded of the journey which be began with the Aboriginal people in and on this land that now incorporates the larger family of the Torres Strait Islanders and Australian people. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm coming to you, Tina McCarthy, that is, from Gadigal land, from of the Eora Nation, in Barkindji. We have a saying, 
and that is the fork is the tongue and the tongue is the fork. I overheard a painful conversation between an Aboriginal brother and a sister. They were talking about both of them being forced to sleep with their father and their mother, both aware that they'd been interfered with whilst sleeping or not sleeping for too many years until they got their own beds, even if that was a mattress on a dirty floor in a room with many. The wildest thing was that they both realised they both had no memory, no memory. They had both blocked these years, these important years from seven to 12. This is when I cried tears for them. And I wrote about them, dear alibi. Dear alibi, today I cry tears of pain, tears of gain, tears of pride, tears of sorrow. More tears of pain, tears of a menstrual, tears of achievement, tears of solidarity, tears of justice, tears of karma, tears of immense happiness, no tears of pain. Tears of a new start, tears for my nana, tears for honouring them all, tears for the truth, tears of the sun, tears of the Holy Ghost, tears to Jesus. Tears for saying Hail Marys out loud. Tears shouting to all my ancestors. Tears yelling out to nana, tears to dad and mother. Tears as bubbles bubble in a glass. Tears as they crackled and I, I drank it so fast. Tears of joy and contemplation. Tears of two years and 20 years. Tears as this my masterpiece. Tears my memoirs. Tears for the families. Tears for our lives. Tears, and that's just the beginning. Tears to all the Bush Marys. Tears, I had to look after Mama. Tears, I was born to care. Tears, when no one cared. Tears, when I was an addict, waiting to happen. Too much pain for tears. Tears, too fucking young. Tears, so fucking wrong. Tears for their lives gone by. Tears, I hope, realistic from above. Tears of adulation. Tears of renewal. Tears of gratification. How can this all be true? Tears for the homeless. Tears for living on the streets. Tears. Now I'm back living always on country by the river. And finally, my brother, I cry tears of love for you. Mario Nikon Cabrera is a Mexican poet and translator based in Sydney. He has published four collections of poetry and translated many leading Australian poets. His work has been published in national and international magazines. 
Mario's most recent publication is his translation of the poems of Mihal Lamas, Mario Bohokis, and Ali Calderon by Vagabond Press, Sydney, 2017. In 2021, he was part of the judging team for the Premier's Literature Award category. Today, Mario will read his poem, Anonymous Flower Cluster. Anonymous Flower Cluster. Looking at you all together there in silent harmony, growing anew again, protecting each other as a whole tiny universe of colors, fragrances, and shapes. Looking from above at the soft pride of your strength makes me feel the implacable growth of my age weighted burden crashing down from above on my body and soul. And I admire your stubborn resistance and wisdom to come back again and again, to fight back such fast growing natural and inhuman disasters. Looking at the peacefulness gathering at that anonymous corner of space and time increases my disenchantment with how creepy the near future looks. Very few options left to regenerate this world according to our ideas and not give way to sinister corporate caprichos of turning humans into a dark digital box of skin and bone. But looking at you also makes me rethink that there must be still some way to recover the lost power of our dignity, to create a new order of things, a new order of things that springs from the people's heart and their willingness not to plunder, but to share what is still left of our one exuberant planet. Thank you. Saba Vasefi is a multi-award winning artist, filmmaker, academic, journalist, social activist and poet. She has a PhD from Macquarie University in Exilic Feminist Cinema Studies and writes on the narratives of displacement and imprisoned women and children on Nauru. Today, she'll be reading her poem, Clandestine. Nostalgia bleeds me out, and I slump anemic, caught in the lowering lines, the streaming rubinets, the vineyard casts. Within vine leaves, migrants, those bandaged nomads, find ease in the silence of saplings. Tanks hang their oxygen tanks, filling with aromas, and I find there another way than a strangulation. Resilience has its limits. You endure affliction until you start to fall apart. The end arrives in pieces. The sweetness of the grape sour to vinegar. I know the anguish of the banished winemaker whose crop rots in outlawed fields. I pine for retribution and martyrs' mutilation. This clandestine arbor is rupture's relic, this libation, my liberation, and illicit thirst, slaked 
in the throat of revolt by the extremist terror yields. You are my coronary cue. You drip feed my suffering. You alone avert aversion. You and I, we both know how to grow hanging vertical in vertigo, driving on privation, our hearts beating in monochromatic burgundy. Our next poet is Coralie Dimitriatis. Coralie is a Cypriot Australian poet, writer and performer. She is the author of the poetry book, books Love and Fuck Poems and Just Give Me the Pills. She also makes film and theatre with her poems. Coralie's opinion articles have been published widely with international publications in the Washington Post. She was awarded the UNESCO City of Literature Residency in Krakow for her debut fiction manuscript, Divided Island. Today, Coralie will be reading her poem, My Mummy Yells Like That Because. My mummy yells like that because. My mummy doesn't talk loud because she's trying to be annoying. My mummy doesn't talk loud to be funny like all the wild comedy depicts. She doesn't shout and nag for me to do things in an over the top way to be dramatic or indifferent. My mummy yells like that because she's been repressed. Because she's been shut down. Mummy yells like that because she's trying to explode out of the box patriarchy put her in to shut her up. Mummy doesn't yell to make some wild guy comedy writer money so they can keep getting the gigs while us women sit on our seats. Mummy yells like that because she was shipped off to another country to be married when she was 19 just so she could pop out a couple of kids. Mummy yells like that like that loud, aggressive whine, like someone is smashing bottles over your head because she's fucking tired. She's fucking over it. She's fucking over knowing that Karula down the road is still getting bashed by her husband 20 years later and all she can say is, oh, you're a gun woman. What can we do? Mama yells like that because she's over it. And she can't say it because she's not even, she doesn't even know how, she's not even aware of it. And that's why it's my job to write this poem and to do something about it. Queen Jean Cabone started her career with the explosive hip hop outfit Killer Queens. As an artist, MC, community advocate and curator, her commitment to her own artistry and supporting emerging artists is formidable. She is an experienced cross-cultural communicator and facilitator and is in demand to host and contribute large scale events such as the Sydney Festival, Africulture Festival, the Marrickville Festival and Women's Scream International Poetry Festival. Today, Queen will be performing her spoken word piece, Regime. Hello everyone. I'd like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land in which we meet. I'm coming to you from the land of the Gadigal people and I honor their ancestors, past, present and emerging. And I like to also acknowledge that this land was never, sovereignty was never ceded and this was and always will be Aboriginal land. This is a piece that I wrote called Regime um, and I hope it resonates with you. Please listen carefully, close your eyes um, and enjoy this with me. Regime, people's medicine, systematic therapy, not organized authority, priority, dismantle superiority. We are the collective majority, honoring, not owing, knowing, not controlling, forever flowing back, never going back, move forward, owe it to the ones who begun. He comes the queen dumb to bring the free dumb. He comes the queen dumb, bring the free dumb. He comes the queen dumb to bring the free dumb. Reinstate the chief, origins of belief. Relief for the earth first. We gotta do the work. From mainstream to live stream, streaming my dream in this reality. 
digitally, physically transform to IP, address profile ID, you can't silence me. My posts provoke gun smoke, you're not time to be woke. This mirror's got smoke and mirrors, see clearer, no fear lives here. Disappear the puppeteers and masketeers so we can all say cheers. But wait, how long do we wait in this frustrate state? Then narrate hate, discriminate, call a debate, intimidate laws they create. It's in our fate to save the day. From mainstream to live stream. My wealth is my health. My breath is my stealth. Avoid detection, protect myself. You can't save me from myself, no one else. Just I and I, one eye open, focus, oppress, we oppress, won't rest, obsessed for justice, a must get, demand respect. Indigenous intellect is what we follow. If we're trying to see tomorrow or continue to beg, steal and borrow that shallow. I never ever leave my shadow, here for the battle. Unlearn, reclaim, return. Unlearn, reclaim, return. Unlearn, reclaim, return. Thank you. Our next poet is Elise Blaine. Elise completed a creative writing degree at the University of Wollongong in 2007. After taking a long hiatus from writing to recover from the trauma of her partner, poet Benjamin Freider's death in 2007, she is finally back in the saddle. Elise is intrigued by the relationship between mental and emotional distress and creativity. She has worked across many facets in varied roles for both public and non-government mental health services as a peer support worker since 2013. Her first poetry chapbook, Grief for Hire, was published in 2020 by Verity La Press. Today, Elise will read, Transform Your Scars into Rainbow Stars. Oh, hi everyone. Um, so today I'm going to read a poem called Transform Your Scars into Rainbow Stars after Rainbow of Stars over the Hawkesbury River by Salvatore Zofria. All under the spangled mid-heaven umbrella, dream-catching kaleidoscopes that we were both projecting into energetic mirrors. Your life is a prayer, a magic carpet ride through the matrix. That's the trick up there. Titan's hazy atmosphere shoots fractals of red pill flares. And if you don't understand the lava clouds from afar, your life will be a dis a star. And if you don't understand the constellations from afar, your life will be a dis a star. On the edge of hysteria, just keeping it together. The ones with flashy fever burn fuel much faster. Renewal is lifting the veil and exploding into bright supernova. When you vault into Elysium, somewhere over resilience, there's a rainbow. I knew you when those delicious days of summer melted into many splendid odes to the white rose. I knew you when your heart was higher than the illuminous arc of meteor showers over the bridge of the Hawkesbury River. I knew you when renewal was heard on the fire tree wind and seen in the wax flower wild. I knew you when you erupted into the celestial meridian like a wildflower riot and there was so much fire and I promised to launch rockets of desire. 
Thanks, everyone. The, the poems of Dylan Thomas, which I admire his work so much, and I get a lot of uh, inspiration from his uh, imagery, uh, in particular, this poem called Poem in October. And, and why I like this poem is because it really, um, it talks to me and to my, my own journey of life and my, my uh, um, seeking to express this journey from various stages of our uh, images of our life, what we experience and what we uh, anticipate to happen, I imagine. But so I like to read as best as I can aloud this poem, which I read quite often because uh, I find it just so so moving and so wonderful in images. So it go it starts like this: It was my thirtieth year to heaven, woke to my hearing from hubba and neighbourhood, and a mussel pulled and in heron, priesthood shawl, the morning beckon with waters praying and the call of seagull and, and rook and the knock of sailing boats on the net webbed wall, myself to set foot that second. In a still sleeping town and, and set forth, my birthday began with water birds and the birds of the wing trees flying my name above the, above the farms and the white horses, and I rose in a, ra in a rainy autumn. I walked abroad in a shower of all my days. High tide and heron dived when I took the road over the border and the gates of the town closed at, as the town awoke. A spring full of larks and rolling cloud and the roadside bushes brimming with whistling water birds and the sun of October, summery, on the hill's shoulder. Here were fond climates and sweet singers suddenly come in the morning where I wandered and listened to the rain ringing, wind blow cold in the wood far away under me. Pale rain over the drilling harbour and over the sea where church the size of a small, of a, of a snail with horns through mist and the castle brown as owls but all the gardens of spring and summer were blooming in the tall tales beyond the border and under the lark full cloud. There I could marvel my birthday away, my birthday and, and away, but the weather turned around. I turned away from the blithe country and, and down the other and down the other air and blue altered sky, streamed again a wonder of summer with apples, pears and red currants. And I saw in the turning in a clearly of, and I saw turning so clear a child's forgotten mornings when he walked with his mother through the perils of sunlight and the legends of the green chapels. And twice told fields of fantasy. There his tears burned my cheeks and his heart moved in mine. These were the woods, the river and the sea, where a boy in, in the listening summertime of the dead whispered, whispered the truth of his, of his joy to the trees and the stones and the fish in, uh, in the tide and the, and the summery sung alive, still in the water and the singing birds. And there I could marvel my birthday away, but the weather turned around and the true joy of the long dead child sang burning in the sun. It was my thirtieth year to heaven and stood there then in the summer noon, though the town below late lived with October blood on my birth of my heart's truth, still be sung on this high hill as the year turning. Cecilia White is an interdisciplinary artist, poet and academic at the University of New England and the University of Newcastle. She graduated in 2017 with a PhD from UNSW Art and Design. 
She is creator of the Breathing Space Projects, engaging language, body and place to examine issues affecting personal and social transformation. She has exhibited in Australia, Singapore and Europe. Cecilia is currently researching grief in post-war German poetry. Today, she'll be reading her poem, Drawing Attention, Reflection on Psalm 37, 1989, a note to the archaeologist Salvatore Zofreda. Drawing Attention, Reflection on Psalm 37, 1989, a note to the archaeologist Salvatore Zetta. What does it mean to make a mark, to break the surface with a point of view beyond a constructed perspective, with its acutely angled lines, fixing our eye in position to confirm how the earth revolves around us? Not you, however, drawn longitudinally from one shore to the other. What marks the other out? Small erasures of time and memory smudge the print of language on the tongue. Still, the underpainting of sensation lifts through your translations of place, an archaeology of the heart and what might have been, drawing attention to the bled edges of passion through the eyes of saints, soldiers and petals. The inky solitude of unanswerable questions dries on your palate until the next dig. We are drawn to red lines for meaning, but do not know how to see space unsilted between one body and an other. What lines are drawn between us? The harsh remarks that sink into the cotton rag of the skin, the stamp of disapproval that forms indelible stains for beginners pained to dissolve the tension between colour and form together. In this wide studio, your shadowed layers open us to revise perspective. We are drawn now to see, you know, how to mark new ways to live. Our next poet is Carly J. Metcalf. Carly J. is a Queensland-based writer of memoir, poetry and fiction. Her work has been published in Kill Your Darlings, Overland, Verity La and Cordite Poetry Review. She is currently working on her memoir, Breath. Today, she'll be reading her poem, Winter. Winter. The elm is slow to empty this year. No rush of new leaves until the next flourish of spring a kind of verdant rebellion. In the full throat of night, I mistake frangipani leaves for summer toads, but the air is silent, the leaves like paper underfoot. The spirit of my grandmother sits in a corner, chain smoking, telling me I should never get married. It is always winter for my grandmother, empty of child, knuckles wax red, thin of elbow, mind denuded of serotonin, her life redacted. With her stenorian glance, she is maiden, mother, crone. I picture her full bellied, legs in stirrups, pelvis shifting, baby hanging halfway out of her body, a doctor either side, pulling the shoulders through the way I would pearl a stitch. She muses on a remnant of a memory. The doctor shouting, put her out. She tells me this with a flaunt of her hands as she blows skeins of smoke away from her body. The baby with its half face lives for half a night. As my grandmother sleeps through her daughter's last breaths, my grandfather sees the child and its half face, never speaking of it again. Instead of a baby, he nurses glasses of whiskey, wanting to forget. My grandmother rolls in clover with her half tribe of boys. Without the girl, she never rallies. 60 years later, as she rolls in clover with boys of her own, 
My sister finds the wee bairn in a pauper's grave, her bones crushed in with the limbs of the lost, and all this with the bloom of a new child in her belly. Denise O'Hagan is a Sydney-based editor and poet with a background in commercial book publishing. In 2015, she set up her own imprint, Black Quill Press, through which she assists independent authors. Her poetry is published widely and has received numerous awards, most recently the Dorkley Poetry Prize 2020. Today, Denise will read Past and Future Tense. Past and Future Tense. I see you look at the husk of me and would have liked to let you know it's not what it appears and I don't want your pity. The weighing scales of body and soul are tipping now, working in inverse proportion. I gather up my days, feel the lip of time curl back on itself, washing away my daily wearies, landing me on the shore of another place between a past that hasn't happened yet and a future I know already. It's a coming home of sorts. Every thought and feeling I've ever had or might have had or wished I hadn't. A nether world of possibilities and future memories held in storage. I could have done it better, sure, but see, I put regret where it belongs along with blame and grief and shame. I daisy chain my smiles and tears. Note the particular quality of the sky at dusk and admit again my shadow selves I buried long ago with those I loved. Enough of such talk. It would mean as much to you as Morse code would to me. And yet, and yet, I see you discussing me for I've become less a person than a predicament. Your words snowflake the air. I sense the drift of your intent. Feel the white spaces of your pauses. I know you know my circle's near complete. But how to intimate? I'm far richer now than when my soul was spread as thin as marmite in the heady rush of a full-blooded life. Thank you. Our next poet is Sarah Temporal. Sarah is a poet, mother, events host and educator. Her work appears in the Australian Poetry Anthology and other journals and was twice shortlisted for the XYZ Prize for Innovation in Spoken Word. Sarah runs a regional arts initiative, Poets Out Loud, and recently completed a debut poetry collection. She lives and works on Bundjalung lands. Today, she reads her poem, After the Transplant. After the transplant, my mind bucks away from the image of your cage wide open, as if the white dove might flap free even in retrospect, if my thoughts go there. Your body, too quickly put back together, a resurrection too sudden to comprehend, and now you are perfect. You sleep released from the memory of your body's wreck. When you are beyond my reach, in the operating theatre, in the hands of those superbly skilled and caring men, and I, waited with the marshmallow couches and inane films playing soundlessly i had a vision of them of us humans practicing such feats upon each other holding one of our own so precisely so thoughtfully in relation to death that the edge between life and no life fragmented and dispersed into a million tiny actions weights and measures into such a myriad of forms that it seemed impossible to lose you, after all. They told me you were bleeding, a lot or too much. I could not any longer detect 
the story behind those kind intentions. They had distributed for safekeeping all of your life's energy among a huge forest of machinery puffing and pulsing, your breath transferred to the pumping bellows, your heartbeat relocated to a cave-like screen on which other lines ran gold, blue and green. An ecosystem composed entirely of human brilliance and compassion. I saw you held in steady hands close to the mystery. Slowly each fleck and pulse was returned to you, the cage doors wired shut. And you could not have known yet how well you were. Yet when your eyes opened, it was you who smiled first. Our next poet is Justin Lowe. Justin lives in a house called Doug, where he edits international poetry blog, Blue Pepper. He has had poetry published all over the world, most recently in Live Encounters, Rochford Street Review and Verity La. His eighth collection, Hall of Mirrors, was released last year. Today he reads Newsreel Ken. Alrighty, this is Newsreel Ken. I have no idea who it's about, by the way. It's just one of those composite characters. I like the guy. He smelled of rich pomade and cheap gabardine and had a strange halting air when he went to shake your hand. But he smiled like he had just taken a great bite out of the sweetest apple. And he crouched down to the kids and little dogs. The jails are full of them. Taking time to really look you in the eye, let you see what he's seen, the true size and shape of us. He didn't talk much about the past, about the war or where he got that cough, Although while he folded his handkerchief away, it looked for a moment like he might just surrender to that vague air of nostalgia that held close to him. Not cloying, but close. Like the steam off a hose down pavement. I liked the guy because of all this and because he could fit so many marbles into his mouth it was a wonder to behold. And when the lights went down in the cinema, he would instinctively reach out and stroke your mother's hand. And when he looked back up at the screen, I noticed his eyes had a glassy sheen, as though he had a mouthful of marbles, almost choking on the simple joy of the moment. But you have to hold on to tight, hold on to really, really tight. Our next poet is Robin Sykes. Robin is a multi-award winning spoken word artist who writes and performs original poetry. Her poems appear in journals and anthologies nationally, internationally and online and often address environmental and social themes. The dynamic performer presents her work around Australia, runs workshops and coordinates Binalong's bi-monthly A Brush with Poetry. Today Robin will be reading her poem That Window. That window, that window over acts on memory stage. I dangled like a climber without rope, no finger hold or toe hold, just his rage as concrete coffin counterbalanced hope. My body played as dummy, but my brain fought trump for trump. The ace, who held the ace? I whispered words as soft as Portia's rain and warm as Swedish massage on his face. The space behind that window tracked my voice, exchanged it for the void within my heart where bargain brokers barter moral choice with fear and reason hard to weigh apart. Now, music, dance and stories shine through night to build another window to the light. Uh, 
Our next poet is Richard James Allen. Richard's latest poetry book is The Short Story of You and I, and he has just launched his new novel, More Lies, from Interactive Press. Richard is well known for his multi-award winning career as a filmmaker and choreographer with the Physical TV Company, and as a performer in a range of media and other contexts. Talisman of Glamour and Solace is his poem. Thanks so much, Michelle. It's really an honor to be here. I'm actually reading on the Gadigal lands of the Yoruba people in Redfern, a key center of indigenous migration and activism for many years. The poem I'm going to read is part of a long tradition of poems to my daughter. I guess it goes back to Coleridge is one of the most famous. Talisman of Glamour and Solace for Jadzia Allen. In the without witness of their echoing, in the unseasoned climate of their conjuring, in their allurement without substance, Words unhush a charm that cannot unaugur its spell. In the too much pain on every street, everything comes from and back to poetry. All these, our solitudes, circle around each other in the wheel of the moment. In our loneliness, in this spider's web of art, we spin and are spun and are one. I know how busy you are. You don't have time for poetry. And this is not a poem you have to read. This is a poem for when you need it. If you need it, it will always be here. If you never need it, it will still be here. A token, a talisman, to know that you are loved. You don't need to doubt it. This is a spell you don't have to spell check or proofread. In your quiet moments, when the safest place you think you can be is alone, when you need to guard against the arrows of a thousand questions, let these words be the armor of your thousand and one answers. Or, if you feel they are straining, listen for the voice deep behind the words. And then, even deeper behind that, to hear the sound of the sea. When, like the seagulls hovering over the shore, you think you are falling but you are the wind gliding. Thank you. Ellen Shelley is a Newcastle-based poet who works as a stay-at-home mum. She has been published in Eureka, Backstory, Other Terrain, Not Very Quiet Journal, Eucalypt, The Canberra Times, Cordite, and the Australian Poetry Collaboration, as well as in various anthologies. Today, Ellen reads her poem, Resurrection. Hi, my name is Ellen Shelley, and I'll be sharing my poem with you today, and it is called Resurrection. Resurrection. Under the gangrenous slab, the rising damp is slow to leave. It's after the flood on a long weekend in April that we hang out the sodden rug. Fibre stick bread on the shore. Miners pluck nests from a New Zealand blend while I sip on mine. The day moon is half wasted. Lawns are making a full recovery. Sap is hardening over bark rich in riddles. They say rain is the spirit's return to earth, an afterlife puzzling the past. I would like to believe in an existence beyond flesh, a new way of deep cleaning. My mind toys with the idea, like autumn with its crust of change. Wind provides the lift to unleash another way. But this landscape is no random response. Even as I look back, it all seems so predictable. But without the guarantee of repeat happiness, 
loss creates its own moat, a leap that borders the whole way around. Subsidence is in the letting go, and oh, how that mists inside. Too long this temporary, writing to hold a page together. Water wrinkles the words a little, changes the lines. Thank you. Devika Brandon is an academic editor, reviewer and columnist whose poetry, short stories and reviews are internationally published. She is currently consultant content editor for the Sealer Network and is senior content editor of the New Salon Writing Literary Journal. She was consultant editor of Femme Asia magazine from 2018 to 20 and for Girls on Key Publishing from 2020 to 21. Today, Devika will read her poem, Fast Falls the Even Tide. Fast falls the eventide. My cousin is in the Amazon basin, seeing the water change color, telling us all with certainty that the earth's lungs are taking a big exhale. May the rivers run clean, I pray, and the armored trucks refrain. Be with those you love and long to hold, but do not approach them yet. Feel the restraint and honor it. Even though it's late in the day, let's develop mindfulness. We are being told to slow down, but my heart is quickening. I feel what was somnolent, flaring like a pulse. Thank you so much to everybody for being with us today. Thanks to our incredible poets for sharing their work and to artist Salvatore Zofrea for generously sharing his time. My appreciation also to Manly Art Gallery and the Northern Beaches Council for once again hosting and sponsoring this unique event. There really is nothing else like it on the Northern Beaches. And thanks to Poetry Sydney and Sydney Underground Streaming Sessions for partnering with us this year to bring you this stunning visual record of Spirit of Renewal. We hope you enjoyed the poems and that we can bring you more next year live from Manly Art Gallery and Museum. Yes, I was uh, very uh, um, surprised and um, to see these uh, poets, people who found, uh, found my work um, a vehicle for them to respond to my images, this, uh, this to renew from my image their own creation, and and I think I find it very, very, um, uh, very special, very touching, for to think that my work has given them the the inspiration to create their own image. Um, I think the whole whole body of these poets and poems, what they have um, shown to me, expressed to me. Is their own response and thought how my images has inspired them to do something fresh and new for their own mind, and that what again what art is about. One inspires the other, whether it's from our own fellow man or from nature itself, the actual source of all of all life, that we are inspired to create something new and fresh for our own mind and heart and spirit. You know, and so. Um, can I add also um, that uh, I feel um, a great um, joy to be part of this body of thought of people sharing the same, the same creation and to have this ongoing uh, reawakening and re-inspiration of work of nature. So I feel very um, honoured that they have uh, looked upon my work to start the seed of the inspiration, something new.